What's up, guys? Hey, Coach Rossi, can you hear us okay? We got you. Great. We'll go ahead and uh, open it up for questions. Joe, I wanted to ask you about uh, the bushwhacker, uh, bushbacker, um, kind of how that came about. That's the leadoff, huh? Yeah, that's how we're starting today. The, the bushbacker. Um, it happened like Mariano, you know, he's a little bit of a, of a, of a, I could see him having a career in professional wrestling, maybe at some point. He's a little <laughs> bit of a, that type of guy. But anyway, yeah, he was making a check on the field and he was kind of giving anyone who's seen those guys, you know, the arm action. And so, you know, it's training camp, you know, meetings are long. You, you attempt to, to keep some focus and add some levity at times. And I said, hey, mm -hmm. You know, you know, you, you kind of look like the the guys from the the Bushwhackers, and then you know, I showed my age because I looked around and everyone was like, "What is this guy talking about?" So, I went to YouTube and you know, kind of pulled it up and showed them, and they got a huge kick out of it. That the guys as of, of seeing seeing those two, uh, the tag team partners, and so then of course next day at practice we make a play and the guys start doing it, and then the day after that you know, the, the whole defense is doing it. And then it kind of took on a little bit of a, a life of its own. So just one follow up on that. I mean, uh, Thomas Rush talked about it in comparison to the, to the knock that you guys had last year. Yeah. Why is it important for you guys to have those kinds of, you, you mentioned levity earlier. Why is it important to have those, those lighter moments in such a tough game? Yeah. Well, you know, I think you got to have fun, right? Anything you do when it's hard, you got to find some moments to be able to have some fun you know, last year with the knock, it was a, a little bit of a different situation. Like the, the pushbacker thing kind of was a little bit more organic. It just kind of happened on its own. The knock and, and the knock is still there. Um, it was just something we felt like coming out of 2020 that we liked the people and we believed in the people. We just needed to be hardened. And, and, and the knock part of it was the hardening of that group of individuals. Um, and so that was something from January on and that's still with us that's still mm -hmm. us and our identity and we talk about that on defense a lot uh, but the bushbacker one kind of just kind of like i said organically happened and you know it's a hard game it's a demanding game it's a but there's got to be fun to it like if, if football's not fun then what are we doing it for so thanks joe if you were if you were to nitpick from last week's defensive performance is it turning some of those pressures into sacks from guys like Bray, uh, from guys like Donald Willis, Lindenberg, Ja Joyner, or what would you nitpick from last week? Yeah, I, I think we want to finish when we get the quarterback on the ground. Those those would be you know some examples, and there was a couple more you know with Rush and some things, and and so you know we, we want to be able to, to not only get the quarterback off the spot, but we want to be able to get him on the ground. Um, you know, sacks are a great way to create sack fumbles and create takeaways. Um, so that's certainly one of the things we want to you know not get get the ball thrown over our head uh you had a couple instances where that happened in the game one early one late um those are those are two things in particular um just echoing of, of calls and communication um you know we we really demand that and it's really important for us to to, to verbally and audibly uh, audio with with the checks and the calls and the communications and the tips and the things like that and you know want to see that be able to be better as well Hey, Joe, what do you think of the key coaching points when you're teaching the D-line about rushing lanes and retracing the QB? Well, it depends on, number one, what type of quarterback you're facing. Is it a guy who's a scrambler or is it a pocket guy? If it's a pocket guy, you're more reckless, so to speak, um, you know, because that guy doesn't really want to move. That guy really doesn't want to run. You know, if it's a guy that's going to scramble, you know, talking about hey where does he scramble at what depth does he scramble does he scramble to his left does he scramble to his right does he scramble up the middle uh those things all go into it ultimately if you you know make it as vanilla as possible the edge guys have to attack the deep shoulder the internal guys have to attack the near shoulder um, but then from week to week based on those things that i already mentioned those things will change based on what type of quarterback we're seeing Joe, you'll be facing a coordinator that has been was with Minnesota the last couple of years. What challenges that present somebody who knows the program and, and the personnel? Yeah, I, I think that obviously the biggest advantage is their ability to, to know our people. Um, you know, as far as the schemes concerned, you know, everyone gets the scheme and is, is able to see it on film. Um, you know, the teams that we've played in conference now, you know, going back to, you know, 18 kind of when, when I took over, you know, We've been playing those teams every year and they see us on film. And even though we evolve and we grow and we change, 
um, that they have a feel for what we do, just like we have a feel for what they do. Uh, I think obviously the guys that were here know our personnel because they saw them in practice every day. Um, they see uh, the scheme on film. Um, so there's a little bit more familiarity, but you know, we also have familiarity as well um, with being able to see some of the things that, that went on here in terms of scheme and some of the uh, tendencies and, and personality and those things. So I wouldn't read too much into it. It happens all the time. You know, there's guys that end up on staffs on a regular basis who've been with you or you've been with. Um, it's all part of college football. How would you assess Gage Keys and Cody Lindenberg's first couple of games? You know, I, I think w starting with Cody, you know, in game one, you know, I, I think he came in and did his job. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm not sure, I think G uh, Cody kind of got asked about maybe a little bit uh, in some prior talks. And, you know, he's really grown. Uh, I think in game two, he, he, he flashed. Every, you know, I think people saw him make some plays out on the field. And, and that's what he's capable of doing. I, you know, I've kind of believed that since the first day I seen him work out, um, that he has that ability. Length, he's got speed, he's got explosion, and he's got intelligence. Um, but it's not, you know, this isn't microwavable defensive players where we put them in the microwave, put hit 30 seconds, and then they come out and ready to go. Like they, they got to develop, they got to get coached, they got to work. And you know, I think what he showed is what he's capable of. Um, but now the, the challenge is hey, there needs to be a consistency level to that. Let's see that on a regular basis. Let's not that be a one-time thing, that's going to be an every-time thing. And so uh, I believe in him. I, I believe he's going to be a tremendous player for him, for us because he works really hard and he's a great person. Um, you know, Gage Keys, um, he's, he's, he's shown some ability. He's shown some flash. He's shown some speed. Um, he's got some twitch. You know, we talked about that last week. Um, so he needs to continue to build upon those attributes because I think he can really give us something uh, in the movement game. He can really give us something in the pass rush game, and he just needs to keep working hard like he is. Um, we've been really pleased with the progress he's made from last year to now. Uh, again, he missed some time with injury, so he's a little bit, um, you know, has some time, to, has less time than maybe some guys that are normally in his class, but we've been pleased with the progress, but we want to see more because we think he has a really high ceiling as well. When it comes to Cody, I mean, he was literally thrown to the wolves in that Michigan game during the COVID year. What did he take from that that time? What did you guys take from that time when he was there maybe prematurely? Well, you know, I think it just gave him the experience of being in the arena, so to speak. Um, you know, anytime you go in there, you're going to fail. Uh, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn. You're going to grow. And he had some failing early on in that uh, in that in that game and in those early games. Um, and so you can look at that as a positive or negative. We turn, we choose to look at that as a negative because if you have failing, anyone who's successful in any you know field of life, anyone who's reached the top, they early on in their career, you'll go back and you'll look, and there were mistakes and there was failing. But the key to it is the response to the failing. You know, some people when they fail, they blame others, uh, or they lose confidence, or they don't work as hard. The proper response to failing is, hey, listen, what can I gather from that inf from that mistake? How can I get better? Do I need to change my process? Or is it just a product of going in and just continuing to work the process longer? And so I think it was really good for him to go in, have that experience, step away from it. He had some injuries that year. Last year he came back uh, in the Colorado game last year. I thought he played really well, and then he got injured that week in practice and was out the rest of the year. So he had all that, uh, those experiences that he brought into spring ball this year. He worked really hard in the weight room, um, and he's, he's, he's trending. He's progressing. So he's not a complete player by any means, but he's, he's on the road. Time for two more for Coach Rossi. Joe, does Moe's running style remind you of anybody else that you've seen, either in college or pro? It's a great question. Here's what I, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, but here's what I would say. Um, you know, I, I always joke with the new defensive coaches when they get on staff and, and I say, Hey, look, I said, you, you don't appreciate Mo until it's game day. I said, cause when it's thud, like, and we don't really tackle, like that's not Mo's, that's not Mo's time. Cause Mo's time is he's going to make you miss and then run through you. And he's going to wear you down over the course of four quarters. And that maybe doesn't show up in a team period where you come up and you tag off or you butt up. But when, when, he, when he gets into gameplay, 
and he gets a chance to wear you down over the course of the game, and then his vision really gets to show. And then when he gets to the second and third level, he can trigger it below and run through people. Um, so I know I didn't necessarily, you know, compare him to anyone for you, but those attributes that I mentioned are the things that really make him so challenging. You know, he is not, you know, some running backs are home run guys or strikeout guys. He very rarely strikes out because he's always falling forward. He's always gaining positive ground. He's always moving the offense forward. And then you give him enough swings, then he's going to pop one. And um, so that's that's something that we really appreciate and love watching him on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you're seeing a power five team for the first time this year. Does it seem like, like your team is eager to face that type of uh, challenge? Yeah, it, it, who we're playing, and, it, and I know it's a coaching cliche, and, and it, we when you have a mature group like we do, they're not really worried about who we're playing. They're just worried about each week and going out and playing to their best. And this group, more than any group that I've personally coached, believe in that and, and adhere to that. So, you know, we had a game one, let's go out and play in game one. We got a game two, we got a game two. All right, game three. Okay. And so we now we got a team who we 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 we've seen before, but has a new coaching staff, has some transfers, has some new players, has some true freshmen stepping up. And so, you know, we have a lot of respect for them and their staff. I know personally um, three of the guys on the offensive side of the ball. I know one of the guys on the defensive side of the ball. I got a lot of respect for them and their careers and what they've done. So this is a tremendous challenge. And it, I don't think it has anything to do with what the conference logo is. It's because it's the next game. And it's an opportunity for us to go out and execute the game plan better this week than we did last week. So thanks for your time, coach. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Take care.